Hey everyone, this is Steve on the Guru Brute 2. This video is about SD cards. SD cards are these little digital cards that will hold memory for digital cameras and such. We use these cards here in the shop for our regular digital cameras as well as our videos. And they store the information. We use them every day. Even though this card may look the same as this card, there can be a big, vast difference between the speeds and performance of these cards. So this video helps to clear that up, give you a little bit of history about SD cards and what it's all about. So let's get started. Well, like most computer terms are today, SD, of course, is an acronym that stands for Secure Digital. And Secure Digital is actually a product standard that was set up by the SD Association in about the year 2000. And to have the SD stamp on a card, the product must be SD Association approved, if you will. It must follow some standards. As far as the size of the card, the physical size, there's really um, three sizes that are used today. There's the original size, which most, most folks are probably used to. And then there's a mini size that came about, and there's also a micro. And the micros you'll find typically in your smartphones. That's probably the most popular behind the original as of the prevailing formats used today as of this video. As far as capacity, it gets a little bit uh, more complicated. If you have the original uh, standard capacity, it's labeled as SDSC, and these cards can typically hold up to 2 gig in data, and uh, they were the first ones to come about. And then the high capacity came along, and that's labeled as SDHC, and that would be a card that would be 2 gig to 32 gig in size. There's also an extended capacity, and they are labeled as SDXC, and they range in size capacities from 32 to 2 terabytes in size. And I can tell you, these things can be quite expensive. Not to confuse things, but there's also an SDIO, and that combines input-output functions with data storage but these are specialized and they only function fully with devices that are designed to support their input output functions as far as compatibility is concerned a host device that is complying with the sd association will be backwards compatible so an earlier card will work on later hardware and um, that generally is true, but I've run into a few cases where that didn't work, okay? But you should be able to take an older card, such as just the normal SD card, and put it in an um, extended capacity reader, and it should be just fine. So probably the biggest deal about buying a card would be the speed class ratings on them. And if you look on the card, there's a little number that has a circle around it. And it generally, it'll be a class 2, a class 4, a class 6, or a class 10, okay? And this is the minimum performance that this card is rated for. A class 2 is a 2 megabits per second uh, in performance as far as you know the bench testing that they've done a class 4 would be 4 megabits a second class 6 is a 6 of course and then the 10 would be the 10 megabits a second and I can tell you that that makes a big difference in price of the card as well as the right performance I know my Nikon cameras that we recently purchased here for the show um, we were running them on a lower class card and then we stepped up to a class 10 and it just performs a lot better and as far as reading it back into the computer it's so much faster so some devices will not even work with lower class cards they do require the higher class ones so if you have a digital camera that's just refusing to work check the class of the card and make sure that um, you're using that particular one or higher to get the best features out of it 
As far as features on the card, there's some developments in the past that uh, manufacturers have put on their cards. They've done things such as security, and they've also put a tab on these. As far as I can remember back, there's always been the tab on the digital card, and you can slide it to the side. Kind of like a VCR, you know, you're covering the hole, and it will protect the card, and that will disable rights. There's also um, card passwords that uh, some manufacturers have developed that uh, have their own encryption that will actually protect the card from unauthorized read and write. As far as adapters are concerned, if you're trying to read a card inside a USB device, there's a device like this, and this this is just a normal SD card that plugs into this thing, and then it has a USB. So I can go from this card to USB. These are really available cheap. I think we paid like 10 bucks for this one. Now, if you have a device that will take a regular SD card, there's also adapters available. Let me show you this little pack of them here. So this will take a micro SD and turn it into a mini here. And this will take a normal size and take it to a micro. And there's a ton of these available. Um, and a lot of times you can actually get these for free in a pack. So there it is. I know it's a little confusing and just like any format that comes about, eventually it stabilizes. And the best form factor wins. Right now I can tell you that uh, probably the SD card is going to be around for a while, but I do expect the speeds to increase and perhaps the form factor will even go smaller. I know the little micros right now are very tiny, but I do expect that there will be even smaller in the future. So that's it. I hope you got some use out of this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please leave us a thumbs up and a comment if you wish. If you have your own question that you would like answered, please head over to the GuruBrewShow.com website, click on the Ask a Tech link and leave a question and maybe we'll answer it in an upcoming show. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.